So if you're anything like me, you've just bought the Dodge Viper GTS, hopefully after watching my review video on it, you decide you want an absolute kick in the face of nostalgia and you go ahead and put your Orica racing livery on it. It's bright red, it's got the racing stripes, it's got number 51 on the side and you all of a sudden think you're the fastest thing on the planet. You spent over 400 grand in modding this thing to get it looking like an absolute replica, even though in reality it's just a road version, but you've gone full out. You've got full racing tires, full racing body kit on it, full livery, and you just want to go out there and you want to prove yourself against the best cars in the game. So that's exactly what you do. You hit up the special stage route X because you know you've got a massive speed advantage and you decide that you're gonna take on everything from Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Nissans, anything you are not bothered you are going to go there and you are going to prove a point so you start doing massive big burnouts and you decide to get the race underway before you know it you're absolutely flying you're hitting over 100 miles an hour you're hitting up to 150 almost breaking that 200 mile an hour barrier and you're not going to be stopped by anyone you decide you want to be the fastest racer in gt history so you're even racing things like school buses they're not a problem you're absolutely going to drag race them and you absolutely show them up then you decide that the army is going to get involved and you want to drag race them too so you just give them a little nudge out of the way and you carry on overtaking ferraris porsche 911s you are not bothered you are absolutely the fastest thing in gran turismo history you show out to prove a point even the girls from only fans in their feet 500s yeah they ain't going to beat you so you give them a little love tap take them out drag race them you're not bothered you are absolutely out here to destroy the competition by any means necessary because you're on a gt nostalgia trip you're even overtaking toyota supras little ladybird looking ladybug cars and even school mums they ain't going to stop you you even decide that you're going to pull up on a honda nsx and decide you're going to drag race it no matter even if it's a gt 500 car yeah you're going to lay waste to that too Eco Warriors, they're not going to stop you either. You've got a gas guzzling V10 under that bonnet and you are going to prove a point. You are absolutely on this nostalgia trip. You are the fastest thing in the world. You're even taking out people on the grocery run. You're not bothered. OAPs beware. There's a Dodge Viper on the road. You even decide to pee off the absolute classic lovers and even people playing Mario Kart. Nah, they ain't going to stop you. Get out of the way, mate. You sat in P3, there's only two cars up ahead and you realise P2 is a full-blown Ferrari. So what you decide to do, yeah, you're going to decide to kick it up a gear and absolutely smoke that Ferrari, leaving it sitting there for dead. But you've got one more car coming up and it's the most undefeatable boss going, the JDM anime fanboy. But you're having none of it. You're in a V10, a gas guzzler, a Dodge Viper, the most nostalgic car in Gran Turismo history. But... How do you settle this? Well, you just take him out. There you go. Absolutely. Wipe him out. You win the race. But then you sit there and think, well, you know what? This ain't a proper Dodge Viper. No, that's because this thing is. Now, you can tell me I'm lying, but I'm not. This is the real Dodge Viper of GT7. As you can see, it's got the racing stripes. It's got number 52 on instead of 51, but don't worry about that. This is the proper shebang. I'm telling you now, this is faster than any Dodge Viper in the game. This will give you more nostalgia than anything going. No, okay, in reality, it's a Suzuki Cappuccino, but it's a Suzuki Cappuccino with a little bit more personality. What you're going to see is this fake Dodge Viper. It's probably one of the most craziest builds within Gran Turismo 7. It's so glitchy, so bugged, it's absolutely crazy. So let's go and see it in action. So, we was fast enough in the Dodge Viper, but nothing is going to prepare you for this. This time we're smoking Mini Coopers, and we're absolutely going to try and do it on turn one. But, yeah, it's gone wrong. As you can see, this buggy, glitchy little car is probably the most ridiculous thing in this game. Now, I've covered a bunch of weird cars, like an electric rally car with a 1,000 brake horsepower, or even a big rolling tank VGT that can go on dirt tyres. But, this is probably top of the pile this is the most craziest most stupid car i think i've ever seen within gran turismo 7 it shouldn't be this glitchy and this bad 
but it is. It cannot get round corners. It pops wheelies. It's got no downforce, and it's absolutely ridiculous. And I'm going to show you in today's video how to make this car come true. Honestly, it's quite easy to do. There is actually a Suzuki Cappuccino for sale currently, I believe, in the used dealer. So all you'll need is that as the base, and then we're going to go pretty ham on it. Yeah, we are going to turn this into a dragster, ridiculous rollover car. Honestly, it really serves no purpose in terms of actually trying to compete but it's absolutely hilarious so let me explain a bit more about this car so when the suzuki cappuccino came out it came around to be one of the most ridiculous looking cars ever in a gran Turismo game it's such a sporty looking small car that you will find that even the liveries on it are just absolute jokes none of them are really serious there's a lightning mcqueen one and it, it just all looks so stupid and it kind of adds to the charm of this car now i did this around about you know five six months ago when it came to you know this car releasing and made it one of the most ridiculous cars in the game and it's just been sat in my garage ever since so i thought Do you know what you know i've been away from gran Turismo for a while let's just do something ridiculous and silly you know let's take a break from money guides and you know car reviews and stuff and just do something that kind of reminisces you of gran Turismo games of old i feel like people take gran Turismo 7 far too seriously and kind of forget that gran Turismo as a series has always had its kind of weird silly quirky side whether it's the thousand miles an hour uh, pike's peak or you know le mans cars that are doing like four thousand miles an hour and shoot off the track and glitch through the map and all that lot you know it's always had that ridiculous side and i kind of want to showcase that here so i will actually show you how to build it what you want for this one you want the racing soft tires uh, just set them to both then when you go to the suspension you want the fully customizable suspension so just ensure you've got that on it doesn't work with any of the others for some reason you just need the fully customizable don't ask me why this is gran turismo 7 and this is their tuning methods um in terms of the you know actual height you want 195 for both so go ahead and set that anti-roll bar at the front you want it at one and then at the rear you want to set it at 10 compression is 20 and 40 expansion is 30 and then at the rear you're going to rock 50 Natural frequency, you're going to have it 1.50 at the front and 3.60 at the rear. Negative camber angle, 1.0 at the front, 0.0, .0 at the rear. Toe angle, 0 on both. As you can see, we have not changed the differential. I recommend keeping it at normal. We do have the fully customizable racing transmission, and we're going to set that to 160. Then what you want to do is go into your manual adjustments, and you want to set to these ratios. I do actually recommend starting at the final and then going fifth upwards to first, but you're going to have the first at 4.443 over 60, at 64, second at 3.463 over 82, then 2.569 over 111, and then 2.008 over 142, 1.652 over 183, and a final drive of 3.500. That's all you need to do, but I do fully recommend setting the final and then going from fifth to first. In terms of other at grades you want the downforce at zero at the front and the lowest at the rear obviously i do have a wing on so it has put like a little bit more downforce on but it's completely up to you high high rpm turbocharger anti-lag set to strong intercooler is racing air clean is racing silencer is racing exhaust manifold is racing brake system doesn't matter but mine's at carbon with racing brake pads none of these bottom bits have changed however just up here we've got the clutch and flywheel set to racing in terms of the perma mods pretty much put everything on that you can including all the uh, weight reductions as well the only thing i do not recommend doing is increasing the body rigidity so feel free to pause at any moment just kind of go back to where you need to be to you know keep up with it overall you come out with about 566.20 uh, max uh, performance points with a max power of 138 so how do you make this thing wheelie hold the handbrake rev it up and then keep your eye on that little turbo gauge when it hits one and it's been there for a bit just literally launch it and it will pop the biggest wheelies going you can get some really ridiculously surprising results and one of the best things to do with this car by the way take it to those cruise lobbies and just troll the hell out of everybody they'll all be kind of like wondering what is that thing doing when you start popping wheelies in a suzuki cappuccino which is essentially a carbon copy of a dodge viper it's the most ridiculous thing ever in terms of actually trying to get it through corners yeah it's not going to happen i can guarantee this thing will roll over in no time you can even get some impressive two-wheel driving going by the way i've i believe my longest time is like five to ten seconds just hanging it on two wheels around the corners um it's always better um 
you know in terms of you know just kind of holding it and then once you get it on two wheels just hold it there and it will stay for quite a while as you can see when you pop on the handbrakes and spin it around and such it will begin to wheelie as well um, as long as you pretty much do the turbo at first I even took it into online and like I said I went into a cruise lobby and just decided to be an absolute prat start wheeling and everything in my little Suzuki because well it's funny so I just thought I'd come back to Gran Turismo 7 with a bit of a light-hearted video, you know, away from the money guides and just do something absolutely ridiculous with probably one of the most glitch bugged cars in my, you know, in my garage. I do have a bunch more, so if you do want to see them, just, you know, feel free to let me know that you want more of this kind of content. You know, don't get me wrong, I will still do my money guides, I'll still do my car reviews, but, you know, after taking some time away and just wanting to see Gran Turismo in a different line, I'm finding myself just having fun, just messing around, you know, I've been covering this game for so long that you know i just want to take it a bit more light-hearted as well as doing the more serious money guards and stuff um on the side so don't forget to go and check out my sponsor the controller people in the link down below they sent me an awesome controller recently they're absolutely top quality my twitter and all that my discord they're all down there and uh, obviously don't forget to like comment and subscribe turn those notifications on and i will see you all in the next one take care guys peace